So this will be a discussion of problem number two from the 2023 AP Calc AB exam. So it's a calculator question that presents you with a velocity function. So the context is Steven swims back and forth along a straight path in a 50 meter long pool for 90 seconds. Steven's velocity is modeled by this function. T is measured in seconds. V of T is measured in meters per second. Part A asks us to find all values of time on the interval 0 to 90 at which Steven changes directions. Give a reason for your answer. So what I did is I fired up my calculator. I graphed my velocity function. I realized that when velocity is positive, Steven is moving in the positive direction. When velocity is negative, Steven's moving in the negative direction. When does he change directions? At that one location where velocity changes signs. So I was rereading the problem statement. I noticed they didn't include the endpoint, so I'm just going to touch up my concluding statement there. So Steven changes direction anytime velocity changes signs. That only happens at t equals 56. I didn't solve an equation by hand to get t equals 56. I went ahead and, and I already had this graphed on the calculator, so I just found the zero on the calculator. Part B asks us to find Steven's acceleration at time 60 seconds. Show the setup for your calculation. Indicate units of measure. And then is Steven speeding up, slowing down at time 60 seconds? Give a reason for your answer. So I'm a little surprised by this. Show the setup for your calculation. I'm, I'm guessing they're just wanting to see that you recognize that the derivative of velocity is acceleration. Because in a calculator-based question, if the answer is supposed to be numerical, you can go ahead and get the numerical value from your calculator. So I'm, I'm assuming the setup for this, although I haven't seen the scoring guidelines yet, uh, I'm assuming the setup is going to be just showing that you know acceleration is the derivative of velocity and then using the calculator's capability to find the numerical value of a derivative gives you this acceleration. The units of that acceleration would be meters per second squared, right? If velocity is measured in meters per second, dividing by an additional set of units of time would give us meters per second per second or meters per second squared. It did explicitly ask for units, right? Indicate units of measure. So this is non-optional. And then is Steven speeding up or slowing down at time 60? Give a reason for your answer. So if velocity and acceleration have the same sign, and in this case, acceleration is clearly negative, and keep in mind where velocity changed from positive to negative was through the t-value 56. So the t-value 60 is on this stretch of the graph somewhere. So velocity is also negative. So since velocity and acceleration have the same sign at t equals 60, Steven's speed is increasing at this time. Again, as I was rereading this, I, I probably should have said Stephen is speeding up rather than speed is increasing. I'm assuming that that would be fine. What I have is my conclusion here because both phrasings are used from time to time across different AP exam questions. Uh, so I probably should have said speeding up, speed increasing pretty much means the same thing. Part C, find the distance between Stephen's position at time 20 and time 80. Show the setup for your calculations. So this would be his displacement on the interval from 20 to 80. And if you think about the fundamental theorem of calculus, to evaluate this integral, what you would do is you would find the antiderivative of velocity, which is a position function. You would toss in 80, you would toss in 20, and you would take a difference. So by definition, this integral right here is going to give us Stephen's displacement. We have to show the integral. Uh, one thing that I would definitely recommend doing in the calculator section in particular, if you make a copy error, when you copy this mess of a function into your integral, that can be a bit of an issue. That could also cause you to enter it wrong into your calculator. So I'm always going to say if they explicitly name a function like they do here, V of T, and you need to do the anti an integral of that function at any point, just reference it by name. Don't copy its its proper expression in to the integral. Do that integral in the calculator, make sure you get three digits past the decimal for your accuracy, and you end up with the value here. Uh, the units here would be meters. The problem didn't explicitly ask for units, and so I'm always going to advise if it doesn't explicitly ask for units, you're not going to be required to include them. Uh, if you include them, that's fine. I'd be a little worried about someone including the wrong set of units, which is why I'd always say, if it doesn't explicitly ask for them, we'll leave them out of your answer. Last part of this question, find the total distance Steven swims over the time interval 0 to 90. Show the setup for your calculations. So this is the velocity graph from back in part A. Velocity was going, velocity is positive on this stretch. 
So Stephen is moving forward. Stephen changes directions and he's moving backward on this stretch. So the area that's here gives Stephen's distance covered in the positive direction on zero to 56. And then the area here is gonna be negative within an integral calculation due to it sitting below the x-axis. Uh, but the absolute value of that area, the magnitude of that area, would give the distance that he covered from 56 the rest of the way to 90. The easy way to get that calculated in one integral is to just slap absolute values around your velocity function. Uh, and this really becomes a speed function, right? In, in calculus, the way that we define speed is the magnitude or the absolute value of velocity. That takes this negative stretch of the velocity graph and flips it to positive. So now I have the ability to do just a single integral from zero to 90 of the absolute value of velocity, that's gonna give me my total distance traveled on the interval zero to 90.